even with 150 plus photos to check out, we still can't get enough of this sweet ride. We're not going to spend too much time talking here, because let's face it, you want to see all 158 photos of this sickeningly awesome Toyota FJ40 Land Cruiser reimagined as a slam to the ground street rod. The story and photos come to us from South Africa by chap named Chris Wall, who aside from being a writer and mental gearhead is also an ace with the camera, as you can plainly see. Be sure to check him out on Facebook. What you're looking at here is a 1976 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40, built by the Mad Minds at Allers Rods and Customs in a shop just north of Johannesburg. The build took 1200 hours, and as you can see, no detail was spared. Speaking to Wall, the builders said they wanted to represent the hot rod scene in South Africa by creating something that was a proper homegrown rod. Old Land Cruisers are certainly part of the culture in that neck of the woods, so no expense was spared in bringing this truly unique Toyota to life. And it is very unique. The front suspension was completely custom fabricated, with the wheels and rear differential coming from a Land Rover Discovery. The front brakes are four pot calipers with single pot discs in the back, and to pay homage to the FJ40S Toyota roots, power comes from a Lexus 1UZ V8 making 300 horsepower that's rooted to the back through the matching Lexus 5 speed automatic. Other bits include a full cage inside, with seats from a Jeep Wrangler and headlights from a first generation Volkswagen Golf, of all things. And of course there are all the custom body tweaks that are simply too numerous to mention. While it's safe to say this Land Cruiser doesn't have the off-road prowess it once had, for a street rod it actually shows a surprising amount of ground clearance. The off-road tires obviously help with that, while also serving to help set this project apart from any other street rod on, or off, the road. Perhaps the best part of all, however, is that the FJ40 is finished in a period correct shade of 10. Now for the really good part. Set aside a half hour and marvel in the details of this amazing build through the gallery below. This, ladies and gents, is the new Porsche KN. Porsche calls it the third generation of its original SUV, which tells us that it's a proper overhaul, no matter how much it looks like a pert facelift. Indeed, 
however much you think the new KN looks like the car it replaces, be reassured that it's properly new. It's based on the same MLB platform as the Bentley Bentayga and Audi Q7 and has an entirely aluminium body, so while it's longer, lower and wider than the car it replaces, it's lighter by up to 65 kilograms. This is excellent news for the KN's reputation as the best driving large SUV. So too is the optional rear axle steering from the Panamera N911, and the 48-volt electric architecture that gives a faster reacting anti-roll suspension system. The same system makes the Audi SQ7 an outrageously nimble car to drive for its Leviathan size. Expect even greater things from a Porsche using the same technology. Two engines will be available from launch, both petrol, both six-cylinder and both with a new eight-speed Tiptronic automatic gearbox. We'll have to wait a bit for the inevitable turbo-slash-diesel-slash-hybrids, so for now the quickest is the 2.9-liter twin-turbo V6 in the KNS, which gives 434 bhp and 0 to 62 miles per hour in 4.9 secs. Regular KNs hit 62 miles per hour in 5.9 sec, thanks to a 335 bhp 3.0 liter V6 with a single turbo dot inside, the KN looks rather a lot like the latest Panamera, and gets a 12.3 in media and NAV screen with more menus than a medium sized restaurant. A big rev counter is flanked by two 7IN displays with more information than any human brain could possibly need. And thankfully the Panamera's silly electrically operated air vents are missing in action. Other interesting bits? The boot is bigger by 100 liters, better for the booze cruise, if that's still a thing people do, and the tires are now wider at the rear than the front, better for handling. Every KN gets LED headlights and there are many different off-road modes, mud, gravel, sand, and rock, that almost no KN buyer will ever use. The third gen SUV also debuts a new Porsche acronym, PSCB. That decodes as Porsche surface coated brake, and it gives the standard brakes a tungsten carbide layer, nope, us neither, to make them last longer. Handy if you intended on driving a car this large with vigor. Prices start at £55,965 for the basic V6, or £68,330 for the KNS. That equates to a rise of around £4,000 over the outgoing KN. Like what you see? Or do you wish Porsche had been a touch more adventurous with the styling? Despite a voracious appetite for anything and everything lifted with an open-air cargo bed, there's a surprising number of trucks that aren't sold stateside. Most of these are midsize or smaller, deemed not appropriate for our big truck, big roads buying mentality. Despite this, it stings when we see a cool limited edition truck we're not privy to, like the new Volkswagen Amarok Dark Label set to debut later this month in Frankfurt. We've long bemoaned the Amarok's absence in the US, only vicariously enjoying the truck through the online configurator. VW's not making this any easier, especially with the forthcoming Dark Label edition. Similar to the ubiquitous Midnight Edition trucks from Chevrolet, the dark label dims the exterior of the truck with indium gray matte paint. Trim is darkened as well, with black sill pipes, matte black styling bar, matte black door handles, side mirrors, smoke chrome grill inserts, and special wheels finished in anthracite. Inside, new black headliner and embroidered floor mats add duskiness to the cockpit. Next to the dark label, VW will roll out the new Amarok Aventura exclusive style concept. The Aventura's powertrain isn't confirmed, but VW does admit the truck packs additional power, now up to 254 HP. VW is coy on what kind of torque this puts out, but says the Aventura has increased torque. Visually, the concept is sportier than a regular Emmerich. The turmeric yellow metallic paint, along with bright chrome fixtures to the cargo box, grille, and rear bumper adds flash while a black leather interior features contrasting turmeric stitching as well. Look for the two trucks to debut side by side at the 2017 Frankfurt Motor Show. Toyota Hilux pickup trucks are legendary for the durability and reliability they have displayed around the world since 1968. In the US, 
the Hillux name was dropped in the mid-1970s in favor of Simply Truck until the arrival of the Tacoma name in 1995. Everywhere else, however, it's still called a Hillux, or Hilux, in Australia. To celebrate 50 years of kicking ass around the globe, a special Hillux Invincible 50 show truck is now on display at the 2017 Frankfurt Motor Show. Since its inception, Toyota says global sales of the Hilux have reached over 18 million units not too shabby. The silver Hilux Invincible 50 Special Edition sports matte black with a splash of red graphics high over its sidebars, a black front underrun, black roll bar, and black wheel arch moldings. It rolls on 18-inch matte black alloy wheels fitted with beefy BF Goodrich all-terrain tires. Inside, the pickup gets a plastic bed liner and a large toolbox, model-specific scuff plates, floor mats, and a leather handbrake all black, of course. No other details were provided about the special edition truck, but we imagine it packs a 2.7-liter gasoline four-cylinder engine or a 2.8-liter turbo diesel one that's mated to a six-speed manual transmission, but that's really just our wishful thinking. Toyota states that Hilux European sales are expected to top 40,600 units in 2017, which should best the previous record of 40,104 set back in 2007. Keep on trucking Toyota. Ailsund, Norway The Veeler in 2018 Range Rover Veeler, named after the decoy badges used on prototypes of the first ever version of Land Rover's boxy ute in 1969, is Latin for veiled, a leitmotif whose inscrutable modernity hits you over the head with its rampant subtlety. This is the design equivalent of silence so intense it's deafening, a theme that carries from stem to stern in Range Rover's first midsize SUV. Squeeze the Veeler's remote and its door handles deploy from a flush fit with the sheet metal. Press the start button and a touch screen silently tilts while two other TFTs come to life. Set it in motion, and the all-new, 2018 Veeler slices through the air with a drag coefficient of 0.32 making it the slipperiest Land Rover in history, while riding on an air suspension with a perfect 50 50 balance. In case you haven't already caught the prevailing theme of understatement, Range Rover reps are quick to tout that the new Veeler as an exercise in minimalism, reductionism, and just about any other ism you might ascribe to a Broncusi sculpture in polished brass. Long and low, flush, and taut, the Veeler looks remarkably balanced from almost any angle. A visual portmanteau that blends the top dog Range Rover's elegant gravitas with a touch of the smaller Evoque's angularity, this newcomer's form factor exudes a sense of that thing you didn't know you needed, a certain Cupertino-esque J-E-N-E say esqua. But the idea of elegance, at least in its abstract form, is far from my transom as I maneuver the Veeler down a jagged off-road course through a glaciated Norwegian valley near the Vognerian Troll Steigen Pass. My tester, a top-of-the-heap first edition version saddled with a $90,295 sticker price, rides on massive 22-inch 265-40 tires visually beefy, but suboptimal kit for off-tarmac duty. Beneath the Veeler's pretty skin is a modified version of the Jaguar F-Pace's mostly aluminum chassis that's been reinforced for off-road competence and is further bolstered by Land Rover's Terrain Response 2 system which orchestrates goodies like an active rear locking differential, low traction launch system, hill descent control, and an available air suspension with adaptive shocks, standard on V6 models, all of which work in conjunction with stability control. The system maximizes traction by monitoring wheel movement 500 times a second, a feature which helps enable the Veeler's billy goat-like grip on the loose rocks below. While its approach angle, breakover angle, and waiting depth are eclipsed by the more rugged Discovery, Veeler holds its own when articulating over uneven, steep, and dirty surfaces. Off-road aptitude is, of course, integral to Land Rover's brand narrative, and the Veeler's relative capability is reassuring given its supermodel looks. After all, what good is great bone structure if it houses a dumb brain? Also encouraging is the panoply of assistance systems, front, side, and rear-facing cameras as well as info including steering wheel position, the slope-slash-tilt of the terrain, suspension travel, and torque distribution. 
perform a water crossing and there's even a weight sensing display with a graphical representation of how close you are to reaching the maximum depth of 25.6 inches. If you can't be bothered to peel your eyes away from the view, key info is projected via the Veeler's head-up display. Merge onto the road and wipe the light dusting off the glass panel displays, and not surprisingly, Veeler plays the part of Boulevardy or more convincingly. It manages small DIPs and big bumps with a level of composure closer an air suspension equipped Range Rover Sport, which is roughly 2 inches longer, bumper to bumper, than the Evoque, which measures 17 inches shorter. Veeler rides large, with the view of its domed hood occupying a lower portion of the windshield's letterboxed vantage point. She's a big girl no doubt, but despite its 4,471 pounds curb weight, the four-cylinder diesel drops to 4,359 pounds, four-cylinder gas versions tip the scales at 4,217 pounds, direction changes take place with relative ease. That's thanks in part to its adaptable suspension, low-profile street tires, and a brake vectoring system that squeezes the inside calipers to help rotate the vehicle. The supercharged 3.0-liter V6 S 380 horsepower, 332 lbft output can scoot Veeler to 60 miles per hour in a respectable 5.3 seconds, but that acceleration feels buttery and predictable thanks to the engine's linear power delivery and the ZF8 speed S smooth shift action. Driving modes can be switched via the lower touch screen panel or physical dials, which double as HVAC controllers. While preset drive modes are easy enough to set, the bottom capacitive touch screen also enables all parameters engine, transmission, suspension, etc. to be displayed and adjusted at one, which might quell some critics who might resent the electronic interface overload. The quality of the screen image is exceptional, with crisp, vivid high resolution graphics and pleasantly illustrated vehicle photography to support the settings, witness various versions of artfully depicted Veeler kissed with studio like light. The vehicle's multifunction instrument panel ahead of the driver is sharp enough, as are the two central screens, but despite the relatively seamless integration and easy access to most important data points, there's something lost with the abandonment of physical gauges. The screens glow vivaciously in daylight and their seemingly frictionless surfaces dim to a slick, black blankness when switched off, but this digitalization marks the end of a great era of mechanically analog information transfer, Additionally, there's no haptic feedback when you touch those screens and sometimes, especially when G-forces interfere with the task at hand, it takes a double tap to push those small virtual buttons. The world's most glamorous brands Rolls-Royce, Bentley, and Mercedes-Benz among them have taken to fully or near fully digital displays, so it's no shock Land Rover has finally climbed aboard as well. At least the two real rotary dials take over some of the functionality and can be configured to control different functions. There's also a smaller physical dial allowing for quick volume or power adjustments. The interior of our first edition Veeler plays a convincingly plush mini-me to the range-topping Range Rover. With soft Windsor leather across the doors, steering wheel, and the brand's so-called full-width unbroken beam dashboard, there's a sense of specialness and luxury that's rounded out by an Alcantara headliner and details like cut diamond perforations, which form a subtle array of union jacks across the seat centers. Chief designer of color and materials Amy Frasella says the pattern was greenlit after it occurred by happenstance, though there appear to be few accidents in the execution of the Veeler. Some choices are a tad trendy, witness the copper bumper blades and fender vents, but our tester also offered no shortage of lovely fashion-forward details, from the sharply carved matrix laser LED headlamps to the flux silver satin paint, which is only available on first edition models capped at 500 units for the U.S. Another pleasant touch is Range Rover's first textile trim to be positioned on the same level as leather, a hide-free option that's available as a no-cost alternative to the top-tier Windsor trim. Vedra a Danish company that has supplied high-end furniture manufacturers like Knoll and Vitra, manufactures the wool-slash-polyester blend that feels and looks like an expensive men's suit. The polyester portion softens the tactility and helps with wickability, early samples with a higher wool ratio didn't pass Land Rover's fogging test. 
The accenting myco cloth is manufactured from recycled bottles but creates a convincing doppelganger for suede. I don't want to call this a fringe activity, Frascella says, referring to the alternative interior, because the fringe is starting to become the norm. Being a vegan or a vegetarian, nobody really questions that anymore. That said, when Land Rover chief designer Gary McGovern approved the fabric option, he led Frascella's design team to a decidedly old world source for further inspiration, his Seville Row Taylor. The Veeler subtext might be subtlety, but a recurrent thread is a shock of the new that, mostly, peacefully coexists with the comfort of tradition. Though we have yet to experience lower end, higher volume models like the base four cylinder gas, $50,895, four cylinder diesel, $57,195, or base supercharged V6, $65,195, the top line Veeler first edition knocks it out of the park as a both an instrument of utility and an object of desire.